Hi, this is Sue, and you're with me and Get Sold. And I wanted to do an outside video today because the weather is beautiful, and I'm back at my other lovely safe haven. So what I wanted to talk about today is even though I'm still going through stuff, one of the things I keep hearing over and over again is that I've been through so much stuff that I can actually start talking about the things that kept me alive, that kept me going when it seemed like everything was impossible. That no matter how hard I tried, there was just no way I was winning. So I wrote a few notes down and these are like key points that I feel throughout my life um, have kept me from choosing a different path, from deciding not to finish this lifetime. And when you deal with a lot of adversity or a ton of adversity as a child, it makes it really hard to be an adult. Um, so I want to share with you some of the things that I guess were embedded in me as a child. When we come into this world, we always forget everything. We forget our spiritual side, our soul contracts, all of that stuff. I got a buggy on me. So I just want to share with you some of the things that I went back and thought about. And I remember being a very loving little girl. It's like all I wanted to do was love and be loved. But as I get older and as the battles raged on in my home life um, and the abuses, it just seemed like no matter how much I loved, it wasn't enough. And they say after seven, you start to get a little cloudy with your... I always say I was like born with one eye open. I still had a spiritual sense to me. Uh, so the first thing I remember is having faith. Not religious faith. Not faith in a man-made construct. But faith in something. Some kind of inner knowing that there was a reason for all this madness. Now it would fade in and out. Obviously, the worse things got, the more trouble I got in or the more trouble found me. It did get... I think I got a bug. Um, pretty rough. The second one was believing somehow when I was young that there was a purpose for all of this. There has to be a reason for suffering. There has to be. But when I was little, I would just think God was mad at me. Now I obviously know better. <laughs> That's not it. That's a whole other video. Um, I think the thing I did all the time that I didn't realize was uh, I would surrender. I would surrender. Um, I would surrender to something different if all of the other stuff wasn't working. Um, as I got older in life, probably late 30s, I learned about soul contracts. Um, Carolyn Miss was a good um, resource on that for me. I had gotten her book um, on the contracts. And uh, that was pivotal, we'll say. But I really didn't understand all of it or could put my own stuff in place until only like maybe six years ago to really apply all of it. Self-awareness and discovery. Wow, that's been a lifelong thing. That's been my whole life trying to understand why. Why things keep going wrong. Why I can't seem to get it. Why life is so hard for me. Why no matter how much I try to do good, good is in my heart, bad things happen. Also illnesses later on. Being in hyper um, fear. Oh, oh dear. Well, hello, stink bug. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bug in there somewhere. Oh dear. Ah, okay. That's nature. Oh. So, I began researching a lot of stuff. Like, uh, oh man. Be a whole other video. I did illustrations like what my brain felt like, my body felt like. I wasn't making enough progesterone, I later found out. 
And that was brutal. So self-awareness and discovery is huge. Later on, only a few years ago, was Dark Knight of Soul, Ego Death, uh, where I did a lot of karmic work, shadow work, and learning about dark entities, forgiveness of self and others. Um, I then also wrote about separating um, traumatic behaviors and what was child abuse uh, from behavioral differences with how my brain was wired with ADHD, etc. Then I went into understanding the body's purpose and its intelligence, emotional purpose and its intelligence. And tying it all together between spiritual, mental, emotional, and body. And I found a lot of my answers there. It takes time, but to be responsible for all of that is what the goal is. Like, besides unconditional love, which I knew as a child, taking responsibility is honestly the biggest thing because you can know all these things but unless you're willing to go through each one and understand each one each concept you're not going to get control of your life the way you want to and if you're still in victim mode you're not understanding any of these concepts and being in victim mode is giving your power away which i did for most all of my life so i just wanted to share that with you I hope this video took because I can't see the screen, but thank you for joining me and I'll see you again. I wanted to add a little PS to the end of the video. When I mentioned unconditional love, that was who I was uh, as a child. I felt it, but I didn't receive it. So I wanted to clarify that. And I also want to say that not everybody has, I know, the extreme background I've had. But everyone is a human, everyone as a soul here in a body is here to experience all of those things. Maybe I took on an awful lot, I did, but I guess it was so that I could understand each concept and one day be able to maybe help those whose lives weren't as dramatic <laughs> or full of lessons as mine. So I understand that as being part of purpose. Thank you for being here.